Jeff for Phantom was the dominant U.S. air superiority fighter of the Vietnam War. Despite some limitations in maneuverability, pilot vision and other factors, it proved versatile and tough, able to hold its own in the skies over North Vietnam. Like most American jet fighters developed in the 1950s, the F-4 was originally designed to intercept enemy bombers at distance during an assumed nuclear war. It was large, fast and carried a heavy missile load, which it could fire at bomber formations from beyond visual range. The U.S. Navy USN, developed the F-4 for fleet air defense, though it could carry both conventional and nuclear air-to-ground weapons. and function as a fighter bomber. The Phantom entered naval service in 1961 and was adopted by the United States Marine Corps USMC, in 1962 and the United States Air Force USAF, in 1963. In the early supersonic fighter era, American pilots were not trained in dogfighting tactics. Despite its value in the recent Korean War, dogfighting was not prioritized and the first F4S did not carry a gun system. This was in part because of the emphasis on long-range interception of enemy bombers. The prevailing thought at the time considered supersonic aircraft incapable of effectively manoeuvring. Some pilots practiced on their own during training flights, and many senior pilots had dogfighting experience, from Korea or even World War II. The U.S. and flew its first Vietnam combat missions in late 1964 while the use of first deployed Phantoms there in 1965. They served alongside other fighter types including the use of F-100 Super Sabre and F-105 Thunderchip, and the USN also flew F-8 Crusaders. While all these aircraft types are credited with air-to-air -air victories, the vast majority go to the F-4. Initially, F-4S did not have a gun system, but were heavily armed with missiles. A typical missile load was for AEIM-7 Sparrows and for AEIM-9 Side Inders. Drop tanks were often carried on other hardpoints to extend the fighter's range. Dropping the tanks when they were still close to full could damage the fighter. Many pilots elected to enter combat with the tanks still attached. Eventually the value of a cannon became more apparent. The first encounter between Phantoms and MiGs occurred on April 9, 1965, when for USNF-4, S encountered a quartet of MiG-17. S while escorting strike aircraft during Operation Rolling Thunder, the engagement ended with one aircraft lost on each side. Later in the war and beginning with the F4E, an internal 20mm Vulcan cannon was installed. Many welcomed the new weapon, though some felt it would tempt pilots to take dangerous risks. The pilots also identified their own lack of training and the Phantom's relatively poor agility compared to the nimbler makes. American missile technology proved less effective against small, fast manoeuvring targets at close range, like the MiGs early in the war. Meanwhile, if the MiG pilot could get into a good engagement position, they could shoot down the F-4 with their cannon. USN test pilot Ronald McEwen later wrote that dogfighting in an F-4 against a MiG-17 was like being a giant with a long rifle trapped in a phone booth with a midget using a knife. Also, early in the war F4S would carry bombs even when flying in an escort role, since there were other threats, which might need to be attacked. The heavy bombs slowed the jets and reduced their already poor maneuverability. Even with these problems, the F4 still had a kill ratio of 4. One against the MiG-17 in 1965. In early 1966, However, the PAF introduced the MiG-21, the first clash with Phantoms occurring on April the 23rd that year. A MiG attacked a pair of Phantoms, from behind, following one into a turn. The other US jet got behind the MiG and launched six missiles, which all missed. Through the rest of the year more engagements with MiG-21, S took place, but the PAF was fighting a guerrilla war in the air. Knowing they could not match the Americans in numbers or the ability to concentrate power, the North Vietnamese pilots instead attacked only when conditions seemed favorable. In December 1966, Cole Robin Olds, 
a World War II ace and commander of the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing, TFW, decided to address the growing MiG menace and planned Operation Balo. Dozens of FRS would simulate a strike formation of F-105S, attempting target for MiGs. Planners believed the MiGs tended to orbit to areas near a particular airfield, waiting for incoming strike forces. Bearing in mind the MiGs assumed fuel capacity, additional U.S. fighters took off at intervals, this way they could attack when the MiGs were low on fuel. As the war continued the MiGs increased their aggressive tactics, and it became increasingly difficult to target them effectively. MiG-17S and 21S often operated in groups, with the MiG-17S acting as either cover or bait while the more potent aircraft made attacks. When possible PAF pilots attacked from behind to increase their chances, soon the kill ratio fell to almost 1. One and more American planes had to be reassigned from strike to combat air patrol. The PAF was innovating and adjusting its tactics faster than the USAF and USN. The bombing of North Vietnamese targets stopped in late 1968, part of a political move designed to lure North Vietnam to the negotiating table. Bombing resumed in 1972 when talks were stalled, the idea being that a punishing air assault might bring the North back to the table. During the lull, both the USN and Yusuf studied the situation to see how they might be ready when and if bombing began again. However, the bomber-focused Yusuf of the 1960s started to question this idea, believing any trained pilot could fly any type of aircraft. Many pilots assigned to fly Phantoms in Vietnam consequently had no actual experience flying the aircraft. Some had never even seen a fully loaded F-4 until they arrived in Thailand. The Phantom had a crew of two, a pilot and weapon system officer, WSO, often referred to as the Gib guy in back. When American strike missions returned to North Vietnam in 1972, use of Phantoms initially suffered even worse losses as improvements to the jets proved inadequate. An improved ground-controlled intercept system code named T-Ball was successfully introduced. Navy pilots fared much better due to their new training, though they also benefited from better ground control and communications jamming, which separated PAF pilots from their own controllers. In one attack on Haiphong Harbor, Navy F-4S downed eight MiGs for three losses. One F-4 pilot, LT Randy Cunningham, shot down three MiGs in this engagement, becoming the first ace of the war. The last engagement between F-4S and MiGs occurred on January 12, 1973, when two USN Phantoms from USS Midway were vectored against a MiG-17. The PAF pilot, Lu Kim Go, spotted the approaching Phantoms and rolled behind the Americans. Inexplicably, he then made another turn which put him within firing range of the F-4S. USNLT Victor Kowaleski fired to side Inders, destroying the MiG. Go did not survive. From 1,960 for 67 the number varied but never exceeded 100. Only a portion of these would have been operational at any one time. From these numbers it can be determined that US efforts did achieve success, and the F-4 was by far its most successful fighter for the Vietnamese. Their claims of numbers of F-4S downed are much higher than the 40 aircraft U.S. sources confirm as lost to MiGs. Given the PAF's goal of preventing successful bombing attacks, however, it is notable that of American strike missions, which encountered MiGs, 55% were prevented from engaging their targets. For example, in December 1966, 20% of the U.S. strikes in the Hanoi area dropped their ordnance prior to reaching their targets, due to MiG intercepts. While there were never enough MiGs to affect more than a small percentage of American attacks, they did have an effect. 